What do you do when the lights go out? What do you do in the dark? And I think this might depend on how old you are. I mean, if you're three to six, seven, eight, and the lights go out and it's dark and you're scared of the dark, you might got to have mom and dad come and tuck you in. You might plug in a little nightlight. You might turn the light on in the closet just so there's a little light in the darkness. You might crack open the door. If you're a little bit older, let's say that preteen type of stage, maybe you put your head under the covers because you kind of dig the, the darkness now. You dig the night. And you might whip out like your tablet or your video game. And you're playing the video games underneath kind of the cover. Maybe you're even watching YouTube videos. Maybe you're watching other people play video games, which I still don't understand. That makes no sense to me. But that's like a thing. If, if, if you get like maybe high school, early college, maybe you got your phone out and you're texting or you're talking quietly to your boyfriend or your girlfriend. If you're in the later part of college or you're in your 20s and you're single, maybe darkness means... <sighs> As soon as you hit the bed, the lights are off. You're just out. If you're married and the lights go out and the doors close, maybe you're looking for a little hanky, panky, depending on what's going on. At least if you're a dude, that's usually what kind of what happens. The, the ladies are usually, oh. <laughs> that's usually how that kind of works. We like playing in the dark. There's a little bit more freedom in the dark. It's easier to get away with stuff in the dark. There was this commanding officer and a soldier. They were getting ready to travel cross country on a train until they get on the train. They find a spot to sit across from a young lady and her grandma. And they are sitting down. They're having conversation. They're getting to know each other. And on the horizon is one of those tunnels where everything goes dark. Everything goes black. So they go into the tunnel. Complete darkness, complete black. And then you hear two things. You hear a, a smack on the lips. And then you hear a slap. A smack and a slap. And then the, they come out of the tunnel and then everything's light. And all four of them are sitting there. Not saying a word, but they're all thinking something. The grandma is thinking, I can't believe that young man kissed my granddaughter. But I'm so proud of my granddaughter for slapping him. The young lady is thinking, I'm kind of glad that he kissed me, but I wish my grandma would not have slapped him. The commanding <laughs> officer is thinking, I don't blame the young man for kissing her, but I wish her aim was better than the young soldiers like, man, I can't believe I'm going to be able to kiss a girl and get away with slapping my commanding officer. <laughs> it's easier to get away with stuff in the dark. Even if it's a spiritual side. See, we like to live in the dark because when we live in the dark, we think we have freedom. We think we have freedom when we live in the dark because the things we don't want anyone to see are hidden. So there's freedom in the dark. And if nobody knows what's going on, if it's hidden, if it's secret, there's no accountability. There's nobody to point fingers at us. There's nobody to tell us that shouldn't be done. There's nobody to have any kind of conflict with, which is the last one. There's no conflict. But the more we live in the dark, the more we get used to the dark, the more that there's no light in our life, there's some dangers. There's dangers that go with living in the dark. When we live in the dark, we slowly die. When we live in the dark, we slowly die. We let evil take over. We let darkness take over. We let sin take over. And we slowly die. We also, because we like the hidden part, we isolate ourselves. So we become lonely. And what happens to a lot of lonely people? They get depressed when they live in the dark. The bad part about living in the dark is over the course of time, evil will just control us all. And then when evil controls us all, when sin controls us all, when Satan controls us all, maybe the biggest danger of living in the dark is God can no longer use us. God can no longer use us to be a light to the world. So here's our question for today. How do we keep the darkness out? How do we keep the darkness out? We're in our Stories of Luke series. 
Jesus had come down from the mountain of transfiguration. He set his face towards Jerusalem. And Luke is going to spend like 10 chapters on this journey from the mountain of transfiguration to the entrance, the gates of Jerusalem where Jesus is going to die on the cross for our sins. And when you think about how Jesus teaches, how he kind of goes through living life, his examples, it is he teaches through his sermons, you know, and he's been doing that. He teaches through his signs and his miracles. He teaches through his stories or his parables. But he also teaches through these small group encounters. Now, when we think of a small group, maybe we think of like 12 people, 14 people. Well, sometimes Jesus' small group was 50 people, 120 people. And that's kind of where we're at in our story with Luke. Jesus is in a small group setting with good guys and bad guys. He's got some disciples. He's got some people who are unsure. He's got some scribes, some Pharisees and Sadducees all around just kind of listening to what Jesus is saying. And he says this, Luke chapter 11, verse 33 says, No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a bucket, but on a lampstand, that those who come in may see the light. Now, back in the day, a lot of times the homes that they were living in, depending on how wealthy they are, was just like one-room places. If they had a little bit more money, it might have been three rooms. As the families grew, as the economics grew, as the money grew, they would put another house like on top. But if it was just like a one-room place, they would have like a stand in the middle of the room, and they would put an oil-based lamp on that stand. So when people would walk into the room, they would be able to see everything in the room. Now, if they were a little bit more wealthy, they might put a light in every corner, a lamp in every corner. So the house itself might have five lamps in a room because back in the day, there was no electricity. This was the only way they could see. And Jesus knows that they know all this. So if you only have one lamp in the middle of your one-room house, would you put a shade over it? You wouldn't put anything over it. You wouldn't put it in a closet. You wouldn't put a bucket over it. You would want it to be there in the center, lighting up the entire room so everyone can see. Now, as I'm thinking about this light, as I'm thinking about the story, there was one kid's song that popped into my head. This little light of mine. This little light of mine. Now, this is a, a children's church song. This is a vacation Bible school song. For me, though, this is a camp song. Now, at day camp, every year, we almost always sing this song. You remember how it goes? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. And that's about how our camp counselors sing the song. Now, you've heard me talk enough, especially about like personality, and how sometimes our personalities are like a volume switch on like a stereo. And most of the time, we go around with it like on a five. Sometimes when I do my sermons, I go up to maybe a ten. Well, at camp, I like to turn the volume switch of my personality with this song up to like a twelve. Now, this goes a little bit different than how we sing the song. So, how do we normally, what do we normally use for the sign for our light? What's the other? Yeah, it's our finger. Why? I don't know. It's just, oh, yeah. it's just, it's just don't work. Now, the next part of the song usually is the Satan piece, right? So, not going to let Satan. Yeah, no, no, I want y'all to blow. Very good. Now, now, here's the thing. Now, whenever you're doing it like energized at camp, you blow really hard. And you sing really hard. Ain't gonna let Satan in out. I'm gonna let it shine. Ain't gonna let Satan in out. I'm gonna let it shine. Ain't gonna let Satan in out. I'm gonna let it shine. 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 Now, the third kind of part, the third verse, is exactly where this passage comes in. And I don't know why we use bushel, but that's the word. Hide it under a bushel. No. Yeah, but that's not good. Like your no has to be like turned up because you don't want to hide your light under a bushel. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. 
CJ, if you're watching, you can see it. Now, she would kind of let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Now, this is where my late 90s going to like country clubs kind of come in. <laughs> like, I adjust this just a little bit. Like, I think of like the, the lasso. Is up to your finger? Yeah. So, let everybody get your fingers up. That's what we're doing. Even Joe, like, he knows. He's been around me long enough. Joe's it. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Woo! Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Yeah. And that's the point. We want to have the light shining. Why? Because darkness conceals, it hides, light reveals. Darkness conceals, light reveals. And Jesus always wants the lights shining to reveal things to us. Verse 34. The lamp of the body is the eye. Okay, so if you're one of my note takers, you're underlining or circling lamp, you're also underlining and circling eye. Eye is one of the keys of this passage. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. The key to the whole thing, though, the key to the light is your eye, is your sight. Now, this is the thing. Your eye is the window to yourself that lets the light in. Your eye is the window that lets the light in. But your eye also is the door that lets Satan in. Your eye is also the door that lets Satan in. Your eye is key to the vision. How you see spiritual things is important. This is a picture of a tournament back in January. And a lot of times you go to a wrestling tournament. This is like a three-day tournament. So a lot of the kids are kind of up there. If you look very closely, Jace, Easton, and I are in this picture. Anybody see this? I'm just kidding. No, Jason. So, so, but I want you to notice that. See, everybody find the number two. Everybody find the number two. It's at the bottom of the center. So, when you go to these wrestling tournaments, depending on how big it is, you might have a tournament that has six wrestling mats, seven wrestling mats, 10, 12, 14, depending on how big it is. Now, on the wrestling mat, it usually has one of these signs. So, you see the number two? It usually has the mat number. It has the score, it has the time left in the period of the round, and then it has the weight class depending on where you're at. Now, back in the day, like 10 years ago, I could go into a wrestling tournament and I could be standing on mat one, there could be 14 mats, and I would be able to see all the way down the line and say, okay, that's that bad number. No problem at all. But something happened, and I really didn't notice it until like this year. I actually noticed it back in December. Now, we were at a small tournament that was actually in Great Bend. There was only like six or seven mats there, and I was standing on mat one, and I could read mat one good. <laughs> mat two, yeah. Mat three, yeah. Four, yeah. like five, six, and seven, nothing but a glare. <laughs> I had no vision at all. Do you know why my vision got bad? Sin. <laughs> Not necessarily personal sin, but the original sin. If you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, man, that's like Adam and Eve's fault. Like one day you can blame them because they messed up back in the day and we die for it. Every day we're dying. Now, now knowing, okay, knowing that I have bad eyesight, have I done anything since January to fix my eyesight? Say no. No. I mean, I haven't went to an eye doctor. There's no like contacts. There's no glasses. I'm not even eating carrots. Like, that's not how bad it is. So I have done nothing to improve my vision. Jesus' point in this passage, you have to do stuff to increase to better your spiritual vision. Because darkness isn't about light. It's about sight. Darkness isn't about light. It's about sight. The eye, your eye, it's the window to let light in, or it's the door to let Satan sneak in. 
We all need to have a spiritual eye test. Like, how many of you have had an eye test recently? Yeah, some of y'all, man, y'all need to go to the eye doctor. Yeah. Or you need to go to the spiritual eye doctor. We're going to get to that a little bit better. Now, this next verse. My no, 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 that's it, that's it. Go back, go back. <laughs> man, got ahead of myself. This is my favorite verse of the day. Chapter 11, verse 35. says, That's like the scene that popped in my head when I read chapter 11, verse 35. Now, here's what it says. See to it. Watch out. Now, this is like a yell. So, like, in the Greek, this is a yell. It's a warning. I mean, like, if you're about to step, like, off to the side of the road and a truck is coming, you see the truck. Watch out! Or the, the, there's something on the stove that is very, very hot, and one of your kids is about to grab it. You're going, stop! Well, that's the kind of idea in See to it. Watch out. Pay attention. Be careful. Then that the light within you is not darkness. Don't underestimate the power of the dark side. That's Luke chapter 11 verse 35 in the PJAV. That's the Pastor Joel Amplified Version. That's <laughs> just kind of funny. All right. So here's the lesson. Here's the point. How do we keep the darkness out? We keep our eyes open and our lights on. We keep our eyes open and our lights on. I want you to become a very personal Motel 6. <laughs> oh, let's play it again with it. For Motel 6, we'll leave the light on. We'll leave the light on for you. You've got to leave your light on. How do we leave the light on? We are in camp mode. We had kids go to camp last week. We got kids going to camp really later on today. When I get in camp mode, I think of acrostics. So here is our application acrostic for life. How do we keep our eyes open and our light? I want you to live like Jesus. It's pretty simple. You live like Jesus. This is why we read our Bibles. This is why we come to church. We want to become more like Jesus until he comes back. So the L is live like Jesus. The I is invest in others. Invest in others. One of the best ways to people to see the light that's in you is to work with them. So invest in others. The G, guard your eyes. Guard your eyes. The I is the window to let light in your life. The eye is the door that opens darkness to get in. So guard your eyes. Social media. Watch your social media. Watch your entertainment. Guard your eyes. H, hospitality. Hospitality goes back to the eye, too, the investor. Just be nice to one another. Be hospitable to one another. Let people see that light. The T, T time with God. Spend more time with God. Odds are you're not spending enough time. A couple of, I think, the third or fourth Sunday in September. Last week, working through a series, I don't know if I'm going to call it spiritual adulting or adulting or seven things you should have learned before you graduated high school that you didn't. That's probably going to be the one I go with. It's going to be a fun series. But the second message in that series is about spiritual disciplines and about how to connect and have time with God. And when you do all that, when your eyes are open and your light is on, you get to verse 36. You get to be like verse 36. Therefore, if your whole body is full of light and no part of it is dark, it will be just as full of light as when a lamp shines as light on you. You want to be a light. You want to keep your eyes open and your light on, but there's a condition before you can be a light, you have to see the light. You have to see a light before you can be a light. John 8, 12 says, Then Jesus spoke to them, again saying, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Will have the light of eternal life. Jesus is a light to us because one, he reveals our sin. He reveals our shortcoming. He reveals the gap that exists between us 
and God. He's also alive as he reveals the truth. He reveals the truth of salvation. The truth that he came to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. And he was buried. And he rose on the third day, defeating everything that exists that causes a gap between us and God. And that if we believe in his death, burial, and resurrection, we find forgiveness of our sins. We are reconciled with God and adopted into his family. We get to go to heaven when we die. And then after that, he's alive and he shows us how we are to live our life. He lights the path that we walk on in this life until he comes back. And then as we do that, we become a light. He shines through us so people can see his light through us. But we can't be a light until we see the light. We can't be a light until we ask for forgiveness of our sins. Until we believe that Jesus is God's son. That he came to this earth to die for us and fix all the problems that exist between us and God. And we can't be a light, we can't see a light until we go all in. We have to go all in 100% to follow Jesus. It's not a Sunday only thing. It's not a Sunday and Monday thing. It's not a 10% thing. It's not a 25% thing. It's not a 50 or a 75. It's 100%. All chips on Jesus type of thing. It's only then, it's only then that we can be the light of this world. Let's pray. Father, we pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus being the light of this world and revealing all things that we need, that we will be able to keep our eyes open the light on and the darkness out. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.